Thanks for joining us for Together. I'm Karen Lee. If you're looking for some good news, you have certainly come to the right place. This show highlights the good in people. I'm going to share some stories of those who come together to help others in need. And hopefully by the time this show is over, you'll be inspired to come together for Colorado as well. And this show is one for the entire family, even the little ones. Well, when it comes to giving back, it's apparently tough to outdo the people of Steamboat Springs. The community was recently ranked the most generous in the country on GoFundMe sites. Our Matt Kroeschel saw that generosity in action. Brian Harvey isn't surprised to find out Steamboat Springs is so big hearted. We rally around those in need. Right now, he's rallying around the family of Drew Rushton. The 10 year old recently lost his battle with a rare disease. It's tough for me because I, I knew him. How Brian and the whole community are coming together to support the Rushton family. That's later on Together. Well, why wait for Christmas? A little boy in Littleton already received the gift of a lifetime. And our Jamie Leary was there for that surprise. Hey, buddy. Cooper Tippett is just like any other six year old, except he's battling a serious disease. I talk myself out of the fact that I have a terminally ill kid so I can keep going and things are fine and he's happy. This day wasn't about being sick. So we decided, mom and dad and I, that we're going to send you to Disney World. How some chocolate chip cookies made this amazing gift possible. I got Mickey. That's next on Together. Well, you are never too old to start a new career. Just ask the Fort Collins Police Department. The newest member of his SWAT team is 100 years old. Kelly Worthman explains how the World War II veteran joined the force. Hi, Chuck. Hi. Fort Collins Police Services are here to say hello. Can you step outside for a second? It's not usually a good thing when the cops show up at your door, but this time was different. Happy birthday to you. Officers stopped by for more than a serenade. I cried a happy cry. I, I, I just couldn't believe anybody could care that much. Why no one deserved this more than Chuck Kovalik. That's coming up on Together. And that's a good one. We're going to have more on those stories coming up in just a moment. First, though, I want to tell you about a nine-year-old who is taking on Town Hall. Dane Bess found out his hometown of Severance had a strange law you couldn't throw snowballs. So he decided to convince town councilors to change it. As Dylan Thomas found out, he's a very persuasive young man. It's a privilege of growing up in Colorado. Having old-fashioned snowball fights with your family and friends. Is it fun when it's winter out and there's really nothing else to do except for sled? But in the small northern Colorado town of Severance, the mayor points out throwing a snowball <laughs> is illegal. So there's no missiles and snowballs are perceived as that. So, so you admit you've broken the law before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On a recent field trip to Town Hall, nine-year-old Dane Best learned he and most of his friends are technically criminals. Well, it was crazy. He came home and he was really engaged with, Mom, these laws are silly. I asked my mom if I could do it and she called the town hall and then she told me I had that to make a speech. So Dane did just that. He even circulated a petition calling to legalize snowball fights, gaining more than 20 signatures. It's an outdated law and I want to throw a snowball without getting in trouble. The best part of a democracy is age has nothing to do with it. We're proud of him for taking the initiative to Make some change, how small it may be. And when it comes to the first legal snowball fight. Who's going to be the first target? My brother. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they both got a snowball in the exactly. face. Dylan <laughs> Thomas joins us now. We want to talk a little bit more about Dane. And, you know, he, his work really paid off with this. Yeah, he had to make a presentation in mm -hmm. order to convince Town Hall that this is something that they should really consider. So uh, he had to go through all the different laws and had to figure out how they were going to iron this out. And then at the same time, he had to present that. And in the end, they ended up giving him an official city snowball. It was the first legal snowball that he was able to throw. And they did that right in front of Town Hall. And his little brother actually got to throw this second legal snowball. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I yeah. see him right there tossing it out. So why has anyone changed this before? Did anyone even know about it? Yeah, so every year the, the local school lets the kids go to town hall to talk with the mayor and apparently the mayor's been kind of telling them, hey, here's our, here are some of the kind of crazy laws. And they were waiting for one of the kids to mm -hmm. kind of take it and put it underneath their wing. And Dane was the first one to finally take him up on it. And uh, I guess he just told his mom, this is crazy. And my little brother deserves a snowball. 
and I can't do this illegally. So. And what does he learn from all of this? I'm sure he learned quite a bit. That you can get young kids to uh, make a difference in mm -hmm. town hall. He had his fellow students write notes oh, nice. to uh, mm -hmm. this town council to try and convince them that they needed to do this. And then he also uh, made sure to give that presentation. And when he gave that presentation, he also found out there are other laws as well that they might want to get involved with because uh, it's a small town and they want to make some change even uh, if they are kind of young. All right, Dylan, thanks so much for being yes, with us. We of course. It. I'm sure he's going to be busy as he moves yes, on. Yes, the next one is illegal guinea pigs. He wants to get rid of that. <laughs> of course he does. Yes. All right, thanks, Dylan. Well, a blood donor has been coming together for Colorado for years now. And now Chris Orr holds a record for giving so many life saving donations. She's given 70 gallons of platelets over her lifetime. Last week was her 560th donation. Platelets are vital to trauma patients and people that are battling cancer. Well, Chris says that she was compelled to donate after her cousin died from leukemia. That was some 40 years ago. It's so simple to do. If you even have a uh, you know, a, a, a fear of little needles or anything. It doesn't take long. Whole blood takes about a half an hour or less, and that they can do something to help anybody, anybody, and everybody. Vitalant says Chris is the first woman to reach this incredible milestone. Steamboat Springs is celebrating an important milestone as well. As we told you earlier, GoFundMe just named it the most generous town nationwide. That's because in Steamboat, people come together in times of great need. As Matt Kroschel and photojournalist John Mason found out, the community is putting their generosity into action. The Denver Nuggets have cooled down a bit. Brian Harvey has one of the most recognizable voices in the Yampa Valley. I've lived here for 30 years. I've been in radio for 30 years. Sadly, it was his voice that had to break some tragic news last week. This is a tough one, especially, you know, when you're dealing with a 10-year-old boy. Uh, and it's tough for me because I, I knew him. A 10-year-old named Drew Rushton had passed away. And they want to build something uh, and leave something in Drew's um, remembrance. Brian's son played hockey with Drew on the youth hockey team here. In the wake of this tragedy, Steamboat doing what Steamboat does best. We rally around those in need. Coming together to find light in the darkness. We should be called, you know, Fundraising Town USA. Their GoFundMe is about to top $30,000 already. Drew's family wants to use the money to create ways for kids to experience hockey at little to no cost. People who live here, their friends, their neighbors, their coworkers are also considered their family. So when any, whenever someone is in need, everyone steps up. And that's why Steamboat's Chamber CEO wasn't surprised to learn this small town is the most giving town in the country on GoFundMe. Time and time again, the community turns out and supports all these efforts to um, help make our neighbors have a better lifestyle um, or um, an easier way through life. And the giving continues, Steamboat style. You will be there for them or their family if something terrible has happened to them. And if you would like to help Steamboat in its mission to get a memorial for Drew Rushton, you'll find a link to the GoFundMe on CBSDenver.com. Well, if you're in still need of a Christmas tree, we've got the perfect place for you to get one. Buy a tree right here and you'll be coming together for Colorado. How your purchase gives back to local schools. You're doing a great thing for these kids that you probably see running around through the lot. Together with Karen Lee, sponsored by Canvas Credit Union. We're Canvas, and we've got you covered, Colorado. Go live. a great way to come together for Denver students and get into that holiday spirit while you're at it. The Denver Center for International Studies at Fairmont is selling Christmas trees with all the money benefiting the students. You're going to find their lot at 2nd and Broadway. We do this because it's the biggest fundraiser that we have all year and we use the money to um, help our teachers with their out-of-pocket ex expenses. The school also wants to fund a music program and put some lights in the staff parking lot. They're hoping to raise a total of $10,000, but hurry up. If you want that tree, they're only open through Sunday. Got some gorgeous trees out there. Mm -hmm. Well, Lauren Whitney joins us now. We just love getting in all the holiday pictures and seeing everyone getting into the spirit. It's awesome. Yes, and a big part of that is spending some time outdoors yeah. in Colorado. It's been so warm lately, but we have some great snow. Take a look at this. Judy Kirchman sent us in this picture uh, of someone in her family just out walking the dogs. That's a 
the perfect Colorado that scene. That is gorgeous. Sweatshirt, dogs, mountains. Clear, clear blue sky. Yeah, That's just awesome. everything perfect in that picture. And this is a great picture. This is from Helen uh, and her husband, Derek Escobar, and they are enjoying a beautiful day at Bear Lake. We've got mm. some flannel. If they weren't married already, <laughs> I would say this is a perfect engagement yeah. photo. Yeah, it looks like an advertisement too, doesn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. just a gorgeous picture. And this is from uh, the Gonzalez family. You can see they're really enjoying uh, this area as well. Just gorgeous out there with the beautiful scene. And I just love doing little hikes when it's nice outside this time of year because you don't have to worry about getting too cold. No, you don't. And it's so pretty, right? It's peaceful and quiet and the air smells good. It's just <laughs> lovely outside. So we have some great pictures out there. So thank you for sending them in. And of course, send in your holiday yeah. pictures. Next week, we're doing a holiday themed show. So we need some festive yeah, pictures. Yeah, dressed up in those holiday pajamas. Mm -hmm. Oh, those are my favorite. <laughs> Mine too. Well, thanks, Lauren. Some kids were treated to a skating lesson that they won't soon forget but this spin around the rink in downtown Denver was just part of the fun. What else they were treated to and how an organization came together to make it happen. <laughs> Skaters are coming together for some very deserving kids. The cast of Disney on Ice headed to the rink on the 16th Street Mall for a special performance. They wanted to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with children who are battling cancer and other life-threatening illnesses. The cast even helped guide the kids across the ice. The entire thing organized by the group Hope Kids. Now, this nonprofit takes these kids out for all kinds of fun events, anything that can get their minds off of being sick. Fun. Why? Because I get to do cool tricks that I don't get to do every day. That does sound fun. After skating around, they headed indoors to see the real Disney on Ice show out at the Pepsi Center. Another organization is coming together to help children battling disease. Baking Memories for Kids makes those kids' dreams come true by selling chocolate chip cookies. Last month, with the help of Littleton firefighters, they surprised one family with the gift of a lifetime. And we love these surprises. One of the best parts of our jobs. Jamie Leary and photojournalist Dale Atchison were there. This is normally never a good sign, but today it's the best. Frank Squeo, a cancer survivor, is doing what he loves most, giving back after nearly losing his life. Come here, buddy. Got a fun surprise for you. Six-year-old Cooper Tippett thought he was having a second Thanksgiving. He seemed just a bit confused, but that didn't last long. So much fun. So we decided, Mom and Dad and I, that we're going to send you to Disney World. For an entire week, you guys are going to Disney World. Not only that, you guys are going to go to SeaWorld, Legoland. Pure joy. It's exactly what his whole family needed. It's amazing. I, I talk myself out of the fact that I have a terminally ill kid so I can keep going and things are fine and he's happy. The gift reminds mom that Cooper has a very progressive disease, but his excitement for life makes her smile. He totally does. He's ridiculous. He totally brings joy to everybody and is stinking. Like, he loves sports. He loves sports. It is <laughs> crazy. Even the Littleton Fire Department can't get enough. And he doesn't really let his disease kind of slow him down. And so he wants to be in the mix with everyone else. What is the most awesome part of this? I got Mickey. Cooper doesn't let much slow him down. He's silly and funny, and um, yeah, he loves to be active. His community is making sure he can live his life to the fullest. Hmm. Cooper and his family will be headed to Disney in March, and they simply cannot wait. Well, this group of friends has been coming together to support each other for at least a decade, and it continues today. The recent recognition they all received for the Boy Scouts. Catch the latest episodes of Together as well as your favorite Together for Colorado stories anytime at cbsdenver.com. Fort Collins police helped a World War II veteran celebrate a remarkable achievement. He just turned 100 years old. Officers surprised Chuck Kavalak at his home last week. They even asked him to join the force. Kelly Worthman and photojournalist Steve Youngerman share his story. Step outside for a second. Body cam video captures the moment it happened. I want to talk to you real quick. A surprise visit from Fort Collins police that had Chuck Kavalik in tears. We hear it's your birthday. Of joy. Crying a happy cry is one of the best things you can possibly do. 
and I, I just felt so good. The Fort Collins police chief, along with officers and members of the SWAT team, stopped by Chuck's house to wish the young World War II veteran a very happy 100th birthday. Happy birthday to you. And to make Chuck an honorary member of the police force. We want you to be the oldest SWAT member. The chief also surprised Chuck with a popular police treat. We've got a donut, right? What would be a <laughs> the house? Chuck's smile says it all, and it's that kind of positivity he says is the secret to a long and happy life. You know, when you're my age, I lost all my early friends. So what do you do? You make new friends. Chuck now has many new friends in the Fort Collins Police Department, and he's sure he'll celebrate more birthdays with them in the years to come. I want to be the first to celebrate my 200th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> with that positive attitude, I have no doubt. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I love Chuck. Well, police in Castle Rock were also recently part of a really big birthday celebration. Five-year-old Ryder decided to have a police-themed party. When officers found out about it, they knew they had to show up. They gave Ryder a tour of their cruisers and even got him all geared up like a SWAT officer. Happy birthday to you, Ryder, out there, and great job, Castle Rock Police. A group of Boy Scouts who have known each other since they were Cub Scouts are all now Eagle Scouts. Well, these six boys seen right here first met as kindergartners. Well, last week they officially achieved Eagle Scout status. The members of Troop 613 were recognized for their hard work at a ceremony in Golden. Congratulations to each and every one of you, and a special thank you to Melanie Hensley for sending us these awesome photos. Well, before we wrap up, I want to take a moment to thank you, our viewers, for tuning in every week, and especially for reaching out to me. I always want to hear from you. Rennie sent me this note, and he says, Together is a wonderful resource to highlight not only Colorado's community spirit, but also the ways that nonprofits strengthen our communities. He went on to say that he hopes it inspires more community engagement. So do we, Rennie. Well, I would love to hear from you, so send me your feedback, your story ideas, even pictures of you out and about with your family. You can email me directly, or you can post them to social media using the hashtag for Colorado. Well, thank you for joining us on Together. I look forward to seeing you next week as we have more powerful stories of how people are coming together for Colorado. So please shoot me those ideas and most certainly your fun photos while you're out. Until then, we leave you with this, the sounds of the great Colorado band Atomga. We first feature them on CBS4 this morning as part of our partnership with Swallow Hill Music. This band is sure to get you up and dancing, so enjoy.